Hi. Are you ready to read the rest of the story about the tails? What do you do with a tail like this? Okay, yesterday we read the story and we learned about a lot of different animals and what they use their noses for and their feet for and their eyes, different things. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about those animals. Okay, so remember this page? all the different noses. Okay. The first one was the platypus. Let's read about the platypus. The platypus, a very unusual animal, lives in streams, ponds, and rivers in Australia. It's a mammal, but it lays eggs. Its feet are webbed and the males have poisonous spurs on their back legs. Platypus poison probably wouldn't kill a person, but getting spurred is very painful and can be deadly for small animals. The platypus closes its eyes underwater and uses its sensitive bill to detect the faint electric pulses emitted by its prey. Then, with its bill, it sifts through the mud for these small fishes frogs, and insects. Platypuses are usually about 20 inches long and weigh about 5 pounds. Next, remember we talked about the hyena. The hyena, found in Africa and parts of Asia, is usually thought of as a scavenger. Though hyenas are scavengers at times, they are also accomplished hunters. Working in packs to pull down grazing animals that are much larger than themselves. Weighing up to 150 pounds, the hyena has an exceptionally keen nose and is able to detect prey at great distances. Okay, next. It's the elephant, the world's largest land animal. The African elephant can stand 13 feet tall and weigh more than 14,000 pounds. One of the elephant's most unusual features is its long nose, or trunk. With its trunk, an elephant can breathe, pick things up, suck up and spray water, communicate with other elephants, bathe, and defend itself. The trunk alone may weigh 400 pounds, 400 pound nose, and be more than six feet long. It has two thumb-like projections at the end that allow the animal to grasp the leaves, grass, and fruit it likes to eat. The entire human body has more than 600 muscles, but there are as many as 100,000 muscles in an elephant's trunk. Okay. Next we're going to read about the alligator. The American alligator is found in swamps and rivers in the southeastern United States. That's where I live. Alligators grow to be 14 feet long and weigh as much as a thousand pounds. They eat fish, turtles, birds, and other small animals. Alligators use their noses and tails to dig gator holes, some as big as swimming pools in the swamp. These holes don't dry up in times of drought, providing other animals with a source of water. Alligators hunt by lying quietly in the water with only their eyes and nose sticking out. If an unlucky animal gets close enough, the alligator uses its powerful tail to lunge forward and grab it. Next, this one. This is the star-nosed mole. It has 22 fleshy little fingers on the end of its nose. This mole spends its whole life underground where eyes are useless. Can't squeeze their nose. So it uses its nose to find its way through a maze of tunnels. The moles eat worms, snails, and insects that it locates with the help of its sensitive nose using both smell and touch. The star-nosed moles grows to seven inches in length. It's only seven inches. It's tiny. All right. Next, we read about ears. Remember all these ears? 
what do you do with ears like this? All right, so the first thing is the bat. The yellow-winged bat, like all bats, makes a constant series of clicks or chirps as it flies. Most of these sounds are pitched too high for humans to hear. You can't hear them. But these sounds bounce or echo off nearby objects. By listening to the echoes, a bat can maneuver in the dark, avoid obstacles, and even find and catch the flying insects it eats. The yellow-winged bat lives in Central Africa and has a wingspan of about 14 inches. All right, next is the cricket. The field cricket's ears are on its two front legs. Opening in the cricket's hard outer covering lead to chambers inside each leg. By pointing its body and its ears in different directions, the cricket can tell where a sound is coming from. Field crickets, which are about three-fourths of an inch long, see, little bitty, live throughout North America, make their familiar chirping sound by rubbing the edges of their wings together. So they have their wings and they rub their wings. And that's how they make sounds. The warmer the temperature, the faster they chirp. Counting the number of chirps in 15 seconds and adding 40 gives a fairly accurate temperature of reading in degrees Fahrenheit. So if you count 15 seconds and see how many chirps that you hear and then add 40, that will tell you about what the temperature is. All right, next. The antelope jackrabbit is actually a hare, a close relative of rabbits. It has very long ears, up to a third of its body length, and lives in the hot desert climate of the American Southwest. Its large ears help it stay cool by radiating excess body heat. The antelope jackrabbit eats grass and shrubs and grow to two feet high. Can you imagine a rabbit that's two feet tall? The hippopotamus is easily sunburned and spend most of its time under water. These large animals, nine feet long and easily weighing 3,000 pounds, live in Africa and graze at night on grass and other plants around the lakes and rivers where they spend most of their time. Hippos close their ears and noses when they go underwater, where they can stay as long as 30 minutes at a time. Could you hold your breath for 30 minutes? I can. All right, and then finally, ooh, it's the humpback whale. The ears of the humpback whale are visible only as small openings on the whale's head. Whales need streamlined bodies that can move easily through the water, and external ears would slow them down. So they need smooth, so they just have little holes, so it's smooth, so they can go really fast in the water. Mm -hmm. The humpback's hearing, however, is very sensitive. These whales communicate with one another by singing songs. And though we don't know exactly what the songs mean, we do know that whales can hear one another when they are hundreds of miles apart. Can you imagine being hundreds of miles away and being able to talk to somebody just by singing? These large mammals can be 50 feet long and weigh a ton per foot. That's 2,000 pounds in one foot. And that's 50 feet. I don't even know how many pounds that is. They are filler, filter feeders, eating millions of tiny plankton every day. Humpback whales are found in all of the world's oceans. All right. Next is tails. Okay. Remember we talked about all the different kinds of tails. First tail that we're going to talk about uh, is the skunk. 
The striped skunk is found throughout much of North America. Like other skunks, it has the ability to spray attackers with a foul smelling, I mean it's bad smelling, eye stinging liquid. Skunks are omnivores. It means they eat just about anything. Fruit, vegetables, little bugs, whatever. Including insects, fish, small mammals, bird eggs, fruit, and seeds. They can be longer than two feet and weigh as much as 14 pounds though most are smaller. The striped skunk first warns an enemy to back away by raising its tail. If that doesn't work, it stands on its front legs and arches its back and shoots its spray over its head so it never has to turn its back on an attacker. Skunk spray is effective up to 10 feet away. Imagine being able to spray something about 10 feet away. You can spray these bugs away. All right, the next story about tails is the giraffe. The world's tallest animal is the giraffe. It lives on the savannas of Africa and grow up to 19 feet in height. Imagine being 19 feet tall. The giraffe feeds on leaves at the tops of the trees that dot these grasslands, leaves that other grazing animals can't reach. It protects itself against its primary enemy, the lion, with kicks from its powerful back legs and uses its long tail to brush flies and other insects from its back. So it's so tall it eats the leaves at the top of the tree. Next is the lizard. The five-lined skink has a long tail that can break off if it's attacked. The wriggling tail can distract predators, allowing the lizard to get away. This skink, which is five to eight inches long, lives in the eastern part of the United States and eats insects and worms. Losing its tail doesn't really hurt the lizard. It soon grows a new one. Okay. Hmm? Next is the scorpion. The scorpion is an ancient relative of the spider. Scorpion fossils older than 400 million years have been found, some of them three feet long. Today, scorpions grow to a maximum length of eight and a half inches. They live in warm climates throughout the world and eat spiders, lizards, and small mammals. Hunting at night, scorpions locate their prey by touch and use the poison stinger at the end of their tail to paralyze an animal before it can get away. So it stings it and then it eats it. Hey, I don't ever want to meet a scorpion. All right, next. The spider monkey. Mm -hmm. We have another story about a spider monkey another day. The spider monkey can use its tail like a fifth hand. The end of its tail has a patch of bare skin with a special groove that helps it grasp things. The spider monkey, along with other monkeys, live in Central and South America. The New World monkeys are the only primates with a grasping of prehensile tail. The spider's monkey's tail is longer than its body, which can be as tall as two feet. The spider monkey often hangs by its tail while eating fruit, leaves, and flowers. Imagine if you had a tail, it can just hang out, eat your snacks. Why it hanging from the trees? All right. We'll read the rest of this story tomorrow. I hope that you're enjoying it. Remember, what do you do with a tail like this? Different kinds of animals. Bye.